Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast, headed into our final segment of the day. And we just talked about the Cincinnati Bengals, and I alluded to it, the fact that wide receiver Tyler Boyd has walked in free agency, and he ended up with the Tennessee Titans, who have had a very busy offseason for themselves, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. And that's what I want to talk about here, where they signed Boyd to a one-year contract worth up to $4.5 million. So a pretty low-risk move for them here. But they have just added so many names to this offense during the offseason. Of course, the Calvin Ridley deal was the most eye-popping one of them where they end up giving him a massive contract. It was four years, I believe. I'll pull up the details um, right here in front of me. But it's four years, $92 million with $50 million guaranteed. Ridley is absolutely capable of being a wide receiver one. We've seen it from him in the past, but is does he still have that same level of play in him is a little bit more of a question. He was definitely inconsistent last year. We've talked about it many times on this show, so I don't want to necessarily dive into all of that, but they now have this wide receiver core of Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, and Tyler Boyd. Now, if you're you know, taking this group in a time machine and talking about from, I don't know, maybe 2019. I forget exactly what the big year for Ridley was. It could have been 2020 as well. But, um, you know, take that group from one of those 2019-20 seasons. This is undoubtedly the best wide receiver trio in the NFL. Now, obviously an older group here, but still plenty of veteran presence and still plenty of talent. And I feel like that is massive because this all sort of bakes into the conversation surrounding the job that they are doing to surround young quarterback Will Levis with talent. And it's not just the wide receivers. They, of course, go out and sign Tony Pollard as well to a new new contract, three-year, $24 million, to be an option potentially out of the backfield. Yes, they saw Derrick Henry walk in free agency, but now they have a backfield of Pollard and Tajay Spears to be definitely options in the receiving game, which Henry, frankly, just was not that. And I wonder if it sort of indicates a change in the style of play for the Titans. Now, I do believe that Levis does still have, I know he was dealing with injuries during his senior year, I think he was a senior when he came out of Kentucky, but I know he was dealing with some injuries there, but people forget he was very mobile when he was in college and he is a very good athlete. So I feel like eventually if they can sort of turn him more into a dual threat option, that could definitely be optimal for him, but got to make sure that he has the passing game down at the NFL level first. And I feel like I'm slightly higher on Levis than most people are. Now, I understand the concerns with him, but I also feel like they're, from the flashes that we saw last year, especially when he first started making his starts, that there could be something there. And it's about building up the infrastructure around him. So they go out, add multiple wide receivers, add a running back that should, in theory, play into his play style a little bit more, And the offensive line is where they invested as well. They went out, signed Lloyd Cushenberry, one of the top center free agents in this past offseason class. And they used their seventh overall pick on J.C. Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama. So they are definitely trying to make some moves to best utilize uh, Will Levis' skills here. And... You know, the Titans are going to be a team where they're probably not looking to be any type of a legitimate contender. They are more so in the rebuilding phase after making all of these different changes. But I think that for them, it's just about seeing whether or not they need to find their next quarterback because Ryan Tannehill, who I believe is still a free agent out there as well, but it was clear that... You know, he was getting older, and when the weapons around him weren't as good, I feel like there's still got to be a level of regret 
for not paying A.J. Brown. Now, I fully understand that's a whole different uh, front office group at this point, and the fact that they were paying so much money for Derrick Henry and Tannehill was also on a very expensive contract. So I do understand all of the different reasons for why they ended up moving on. It's just the fact that they didn't do a good enough job of replacing that. Uh, you should definitely check out um, our YouTube channel where our our other football host, Manny Maradige, he, I know, posted something about the idea of whether or not the Titans could be moving on from wide receiver Traylon Burks. That was basically, Burks was supposed to be the replacement for Brown after he ended up leaving for Philadelphia, or I shouldn't say leaving, they traded him. But um, I, I hadn't necessarily heard myself any of those reports, but would definitely recommend that you go check that out. Manny is awesome when it comes to football, so that's something that I myself definitely have to look into more. And Burks definitely gets buried in this current depth chart with he's probably going to be wide receiver for a fourth option and Burks just hasn't been able to fully put it together. I know that health has played somewhat of a role in this, but you know, I think that when you're just looking at the way that these past few seasons have played out for the Titans, it is a conversation that, you know, they definitely do regret it in some degree, but now they feel like they have retooled to the point where they can see whether this Tannehill succession plan has paid off for them or if they are going to have to go out and invest in another quarterback in the coming offseason. Chances are if Levis isn't good, this Titans team isn't going to be good either. They were top 10 in the draft order last year. Anyways, I think that the AFC South has gotten better since then and definitely you know not the most inspiring group now they tried to make some types of moves during the off season they bring in legerius sneed do the sign and trade for that i believe if i'm not mistaken amani hooker could be a new name for them he's not so i i totally made that up and i apologize for that but um I just feel like they, they also lost uh, their cornerback from last year, um, Murphy, Murphy Bunting, I believe. Sean Murphy Bunting, if I have that name right. If not, I apologize. But I don't think that they have a great defensive group really either. So this is just sort of a rolling the dice and see how good can Levis be for them. And can they build around him for the upcoming future? I'm sure they would prefer that to be the case. But... Really, only time will tell, but that is all we have time for today. Thank you very much for tuning in to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Check us out on social media as well, where you can find some more exclusive short content. And just a reminder, we are live here on the GSMC Sports Podcast every 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern. So we will catch you guys tomorrow, and we will see you then. Take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn, ain't that great. Nice.